Every option trade has a buyer and a seller. Selling an option is sometimes referred to as writing an option. So far we have focused on put options from the buyer's side, but it's also important to understand the transaction from the seller's point of view. Apart from any trading fees, an option contract is a zero-sum game. Any profit made by the put option buyer will result in an equal loss made by the put option seller. Conversely, any loss made by a put option buyer will result in an equal profit made by the put option seller. This relationship means the profit or loss chart for the put option seller is similar to the profit or loss chart for the put option buyer, but flipped around the x-axis. Here we can see the same put option we looked at in the previous lecture, with a strike price of $100 and a premium of $5 per share. The profit or loss of the put option buyer is shown in blue, and in red we can see the profit or loss of the put option seller. At each level of underlying price, the P&L lines for buyer and seller are an equal distance away from the x-axis, but on opposite sides of course, one positive and one negative. Where both lines cross the x-axis represents the break-even point, i.e. the point at which $0 profit or loss is made. The buyer and seller of the option share the same break-even point as well. Again, this is ignoring any trading fees. When the underlying price is above the strike price at expiry, you will remember that the put option buyer has a fixed risk. For the put option seller, this means they have a fixed profit potential when the underlying price is above the strike price at expiry. The seller has a cap on their profit, and that is the premium they collected for the option. In this case, $5 per share for a total of $500. No matter how high the price moves, the seller can make $500 at most. When the underlying price decreases below the strike price, the potential profit for the put option buyer is limited only by the share price reaching zero. This means the potential loss for the put option seller is also only limited by the share price reaching zero. This is a key point, because even though there is technically a cap, it means the put option seller can still lose far more than they collected in premium, and even potentially lose everything in their trading account. For this reason it is extremely important for new traders to make themselves fully aware of the risks before selling options. As the put option seller's potential profit is capped to the premium collected, but their potential loss is limited only by price hitting zero, you may be asking yourself why a trader would choose to sell a put option in the first place. Remember from the previous lecture that there is an inherent time limit on an option. For the buyer of the put option this represents a need for the underlying price to decrease sufficiently before the expiry date. So time is against the buyer. For the seller though, this passage of time helps them. Every day that passes the option will lose a little bit of its value. The more time that passes without the underlying price decreasing, the more value the option will lose, and the more profit the put option seller will be making. Put another way, if the price moves down this is bad for the put option seller, however if the price moves up or if the price does not move at all then this is good for the put option seller. So if nothing happens the seller is benefiting. When buying a put option, this will normally require the buyer to pay the entire premium up front to open the position. As the maximum the long put option can lose is the premium paid, this is the only capital the buyer needs to use. In contrast, the maximum loss for selling a put option is the strike price minus the premium collected, a figure that will be considerably larger. The seller may not be required to hold enough in their trading account to cover their maximum loss, but they will be asked to keep a certain amount in their trading account to support the position. This amount is called margin. Margin is an amount the broker has deemed appropriate for the trader to keep in their account to support their current positions. As the losses of selling a put could exceed this amount if the price decreases significantly enough, this could leave the seller in a position where they need to add more funds to their account or face having the position forcibly closed by their broker at a loss. Once you are experienced with options, the margin system of the trading platform you are using will be second nature to you. However, this added risk and complexity means it is advisable to stick to buying options, or at least avoid selling naked options, when you are first starting out. That is until you are comfortable with how the margin system works and what risk is involved with selling options. 
We mentioned this in the call option section, but it is worth repeating. Selling a naked option means you have sold the option with no other position covering it at all. In other words, there is nothing else in your account hedging that undefined risk. It is possible to turn a short option position into a risk-defined position by adding a long option as well, converting it into a vertical spread. We will cover this later in the course. In summary, selling a put option is the complete opposite of buying a put option. Both the risk and reward are reversed. Any profit for the seller is a loss for the buyer, and vice versa. Buying a put is a bet that the underlying price will decrease, and selling a put, therefore, is a bet that the underlying price will not decrease, or at least not decrease beyond the strike price. The seller of a put option has a limited profit potential. Their maximum profit is the premium they collected for the put. The seller also has a risk only limited by the asset reaching a price of zero, meaning they could lose far more than they initially collected if the price decreases significantly. As they have undefined risk, they will also need to be aware of the margin system of the site they are using. When you're brand new to options, it's best to wait until you're confident you have sufficient knowledge of the risks before selling naked options.